Okay, so we are looking at calculating our copper iron concentration in our zinc copper cell. And once we see that 2.0 molar, we want to be thinking Nernst equation. Okay, so we have E cell non-standard is equal to E cell standard minus 0 0.0257 volts divided by N natural log of Q. So we know from what's been given in the problem that E cell non-standard is the 0 0.80 volts. Our next task is we will calculate E cell non-standard and we'll do that by using our E cathode minus E anode. And in order to figure out what our cathode and our anode is, because we haven't been actually given any of that setup, we're going to have to figure out what's going to be the cathode and anode to set up a spontaneous cell. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at our two half cell reactions, so one having zinc, one having copper, and we'll have to look at the standard reduction potentials to see which one's going to be the cathode and which one will be the anode. When we dis determine what's the cathode and the anode, we'll know our half cell reactions, so we can then determine what N is. We'll be able to see how many moles of electrons are involved in this reaction. And then we can add our two half reactions together to get our overall reaction, which will allow us to set up our equation for Q, which is roughly our products over our reactants. So our first step is we're going to have to figure out which one's going to be our cathode and which is our anode, and we're going to set those up so that our E cell standard is positive, since this will be a spontaneous cell. So we know that we're involving zinc metal, and our zinc metal also has zinc ion in solution, so that's one half reaction. Our other half reaction has copper and copper 2 plus ion. So we want to look up our standard reduction potentials. So here's the table from your book. Uh, so somewhere around here you see copper 2 plus going to copper solid. So that will have a positive 0.34. And then we have zinc 2 plus and zinc solid. So we have zinc 2 plus, zinc solid. That's a negative 0 0.76. So positive 0 0.34 volts, negative 0 0.76 volts. So in order for <clears throat> our ESL standard to be positive for a spontaneous cell, we have to have our 0.34 listed first. So that's going to be our cathode. Okay. The other indication is that the 0.34 was higher up on the table. So remember, whatever is on top of the table is going to be the cathode for a uh, spontaneous reaction. So by knowing that we have this positive value versus negative value, um, this one's higher up on the table than our negative 0 0.76. That makes copper here our cathode. And reduction happens at our cathode. Or we're going to gain electrons at our cathode. And then our zinc would be our anode. That is where we have oxidation. Or we're going to lose electrons. So remember, I write all three of these things for each of my half reactions when I'm working with redox equations. So anytime that I'm dealing with anything from this chapter, I want to list those three things. A fourth thing that might be helpful for some of you is that if you're losing electrons, that means your electrons are going to show up in the products. If you're gaining electrons, 
that means your electrons are going to be in the reactants. And so that might be helpful for some of you. All right. So we have established what's our cathode and our anode by looking at our standard reduction potentials. Whatever came first in the table or is the uh, highest positive value, it could have a negative value, but basically whatever is uh, the largest value uh, is going to be our cathode for a spontaneous cell. So <clears throat> we have E cell standard, right? That's our first thing that we want to calculate. That means that we know that we're going to have a positive 0.34 volts minus negative 0.76 volts, which is going to give us a positive 1.10 volts. Now to figure out our N, we want to write our half reactions for our two half cells. Um, so for our cathode, we're going to gain electrons. Our electrons have to be in our reactants. So we're going to start with the copper 2 plus ion. Then for zinc, zinc is going to be losing electrons. Our electrons need to be in our products. So we're going to start with our zinc metal and lose those two electrons to form zinc 2 plus. Now what we can see here is we have the same number of electrons that are gained that were lost. So we'll be able to then determine that our N is equal to 2 moles of electrons. And we have 2 moles of electrons that are involved in this reaction, so that gives us our N value. Then the next thing we need to solve for is our Q, which means we need an overall equation. And we have zinc solid plus copper 2 plus ion. That's aqueous. Going to zinc 2 plus aqueous and copper solid. Now we can set up our expression for Q. We have our products over our reactants. Remember, aqueous and gases are included, solids and liquids are not. So we have our products, zinc ion, over our reactants. So zinc 2 plus divided by copper 2 plus. And in the question that's been given to us, we know that our concentration of zinc ion is 2 molar. So now what we want to do is we want to uh, basically plug everything into our Nernst equation. And we're going to solve for the copper ion concentration. So we have our 0 0.80 volts, and that's a positive value. That's equal to our E cell standards. So we have a positive 1.10 volts minus 0 0.0257 volts divided by 2. times the natural log of 2.0 divided by copper 2 plus.
0 0.8, I'm going to subtract 1.1, divide by my negative 0 0.0257, divided by 2 moles. And I have 23.3463035. So 23.3406. To get rid of my natural log, we'll take E to the whatever we're looking for. So E of my previous answer, and I get 1.378. times 10 to the 10. So to get my copper 2 plus ion, I'm going to take 2 divided by my 1.378 times 10 to the negative, or 10 to the 10, positive 10. And I get a concentration of copper 2 plus ion of 1.45 times 10 to the negative 10. All of our concentrations here are in molarity. So there you have it.